Hi everyone, my name is Leslie Barringer and I'm part of the team here at Presentation Guru, which if you haven't heard about yet, is a digital magazine sharing presentation information and support from experts around the world. You can find us at presentation-guru.com. In this video, I want to show you how to use the Morph Transition feature to create a canvas style presentation. In our video, Learn How to Use Morph Transition for PowerPoint, we look at how using Morph can give the impression of movement, panning and zooming to draw your audience in and keep them engaged. In this video, we move away from the traditional look of PowerPoint slides to create a more conversational and canvas style presentation. So I'm using two short examples which both use a base image and then introduce some movement and some content. This first example has quite subtle moves as each member of the team is introduced. It's easy to forget that we're looking at a slide and so the content becomes more engaging. So this second example is a little less subtle and is more dynamic. It uses zooms and pans to explore the image or big picture and it has specific areas to organise your content. Here we've used the screen on the PC to add some content and imagine if you had a time sensitive piece of content to cover you could use the clock area reinforcing the message. You can give the effect of zooming in even further which works well if you want to investigate and dig a little deeper into the subject. Zoom right in and back out again. Both of these examples help your audience to stay connected with your message and not get lost in a long and linear presentation. And creating these effects is really quite simple. And once you understand the steps, it's just a case of repeating the process. So let's have a go. This is the file that I used for the example for the presentation team. And down here on the left hand side, you'll see that I've inserted an image um, and it's the same image the whole way through. I haven't had to crop or edit the image other than to move it around or resize it. And that gives the effect of the movement on the slides. Um, I'll just mention at this point that if you can get an image with a transparent background, that's much more useful because you can actually see where it is if you do a big stretch out of the image you can still see where the slide is behind it. I'll cover this in a little bit more detail. This image has a white background, so I use the left hand slide organizer to show what's actually going to be visible. So here you can see on the right slide, the rest of the image is still there, but I've resized the picture so that just the writer is visible. Let's get started and go through the process. So first, let's go down here and then we'll add a new slide at the end, just blank. Then we'll insert an image. You'll see here on the right hand side that design ideas has popped up and asking me if I want to enable it. Um, we don't want it at the moment and I'll close it. We do have another video about design ideas and they can be really useful if you want to create a presentation quickly and you haven't got time to work on the design. It gives some really good ideas, but for the moment we'll close it. Okay, so you can see from the shape of the image and because it's got a white background rather than transparent, it's hanging over the slide. So that's great. So what we need to do, so we've done a new slide, we've inserted an image, then what we're going to do is duplicate this slide. So we're going to right click, choose duplicate, 
and here we have one exactly the same. And what we can do now is make the changes to the image. We can make it bigger. So let's enlarge the image. It won't be exactly the same as the one earlier, but I think that's fine. Okay, so as you can see, it's oversized. If we want to see how it sits, we can minimize down here in this bottom right corner so that we can see more of the slide. And of course, in the right uh, left hand corner, you can see on the slide organizer what will be visible. And now the, well, the clever bit, but the very easy bit is that we need to add the morph transition, which will make it change from slide eight here to slide nine and give us the appearance of a zoom. So we go up to the transitions up on the ribbon up here, click transitions, select morph, and it will automatically give you a preview. If you want to see that again, you can press the star next to the slide and you'll get the preview as many times as you like. So we've got the zoom that we wanted. You can adjust the timing of the effect up here where it says duration. You can choose how long you want morph to take to make the transition. And this can be really helpful in reinforcing your point on the presentation. So we added a blank slide, added some content and made sure it was in the position that we wanted on the first slide. We duplicated the slide, moved the image sized it or put it in a different position, made sure that the morph transition was selected and that we were happy with the timings and then it would be a case of repeating that process. To fly on the content like we did the titles of the team, the content has to be available ready to fly on on the slide before. I think the easiest way to do this is to actually add it to the slide before before duplicating the slide. So I've cheated and copied and pasted the titles of the team and then we can go ahead and duplicate the slide and then adjust the content. So we want to enlarge the image so that the writer is the main focus of the slide. Again, I'm going to go down here to make the space around the slide bigger so I can see a little bit better. Uh, where did we have, uh, yeah, so anywhere around there is great. And then we need to fly on the text, which now needs to be bigger. Let's go back. I think it was 60. And we can readjust. So there we go. And then the last thing we need to do is make sure the morph transition is in place. Because we duplicated the slide from the previous one that which already had the morph transition, this one automatically has it too. But it's always worth checking. So let's see what happens here. So we get the zoom to the writer and the words flying on. We'll do the same again. Duplicate the slide and then we're going to adjust the content. We just need to move the wording around slightly and probably resize in a second. Let's see what we can see. Move the image and keep an eye on what's visible. So that's great. So let's go to 40 and reposition. Bring on the tech 
sky. And again, oops, sorry, too many clicks. 40 again. Okay. So again, we'll check that the transition is on, but yes, it is from the previous slide. Let's see what happens here. There we go. So I won't go through the whole presentation, but just to recap, we added a new slide, added some content, duplicated the slide, made the changes on the new slide, made sure that we had morph transition and that any content that we wanted to fly on was there ready to appear on the next slide. We duplicated the slide again and then moved the text, flew the text in, put it in position and then repeated the process, making sure obviously each time that the morph transition is in place. Let's have a look at the office example, which uses the same principle, add content, duplicate the slide and add the morph transition. And it really shows how one image can be used to create the zoom and pan effect. If I click on the first slide and the image, you'll see that the whole image is visible. And this one is transparent, which means you can see where the slide is and makes it easier to navigate. So for example, we can move this around and you can still see behind the picture and see where the slide is in relation to it, which is going to make life easier. Moving on to slide two, you can now see that I've enlarged the picture, the image of the office, and now only the bookshelf and the picture frames are showing. So if we minimize there, you can see this is the whole picture, but we're only choosing to show this particular part. In this example, I simply added text and animated it to appear and disappear rather than using the morph transition to fly on the text. OK, troubleshooting. A couple of points. Check that anything you're flying on using morph is available outside the slide before the one it's needed on. And if your transition doesn't work, make sure that you haven't grouped the content that should be moving. Morph will treat it as one object and stop the parts moving independently. Do check out our other videos and come and find out more at Presentation Guru. Good luck with Morph and see you again soon.